ask all present to please rise and join with us as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today's invocation will be offered by the Reverend Jaishin Shi, Abbas of Fo Guan Shen New York Temple in Flushing. Reverend. A prayer for blessing on our nation. Great compassionate Buddha, with the greatest sincerity, we are here to express our gratitude for your great protection. Please let our nation make education available to all. Please let our people raise their standard of living. Please let our science and technology continue to improve. Please let our politics maintain freedom and democracy. Great compassionate Buddha, we pray for your great support. May we grasp the concept of cause and effect and understand the re reality of life. May we have the strength of a heart full of passions and tolerance and never retreat in the face and the adversity. Great compassionate Buddha, we pray for your blessing and protection. May our country have favorable weather and never have natural disaster or man-made calamities. May our politics be honest, clean, and just, and never have corruption or bribery. May our ethnic groups be tolerant of those who are different and never have racial disputes. May our society be steadfast, purposeful, and powerful, and never have wars or upheavals. May our lives be abundant in food and clothing, and never suffer economic instability. May our bodies and minds be healthy and carefree, and never be disturbed by sickness. Great compassionate Buddha, we need to learn from you the wisdom to cross the distance between self and others. We need to learn from you the selflessness to eliminate all of our attachment. We need to learn from you the truth to resolve the confrontations between races. We need to learn from you the compassion, to reconcile the conflicts between nations. We need to learn from you the Buddha light, to illuminate the darkness of the world. Great Compassion Buddha, please, lay people of different ages live in harmony. Please, lay people of different social status have mutual respect. Please, they people of different pro professions work in cooperation. Please, they people of different religions practice with tolerance. 慈悲伟大的佛陀, 让我们世间上贫富贵贱都能互相合作，让我们世间上宗教种族都能互相包容。慈悲伟大的佛陀，请求您接受我们众等至诚的祈愿。Great compassionate Buddha, please accept this prayer for our country. Please compassion, please accept this prayer for our country. May Buddha bless America.
Reading of the journal. In Senate Tuesday, May 27th, the Senate met pursuant to adjournment. Journal of Monday, May 26th, was read and approved. Our motion, Senate adjourned. Without objection, the journal stands approved as read. Presentation of petitions. Messages from the Assembly. Secretary will read. On page 33, Senator Kennedy moves to discharge from the Committee on Codes Assembly Bill Number 7720B and substitute the identical Senate Bill Number 4187C, 13 Calendar 471. The substitution is so ordered. On page 54, Senator Bonasek moves to discharge from the Committee on Finance Assembly Bill Number 8698 and substitute the identical Senate Bill Number 6527, 13 Calendar 730. Substitution is so ordered. Messages from the Governor. Reports of standing committees, reports of select committees, communications and reports of state officers, motions and resolutions. Senator Libis. Senator David Valeski from the IDC. Senator Valeski. Mr. President, on page 43, I offer the following amendments to calendar number 603, Senate Bill 4652A, and ask that said bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. The amendments are received, and the bill shall retain its place on third reading. Senator Libis. Mr. President, I believe if you call on uh, the Deputy Leader um, Gennaris, he has a motion. Senator Gennaris. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of Leader Stuart Cousins, on page 51, I offer the following amendments to calendar 698, Senate Prince 6738, and ask that said bill retain its place on third reading calendar. The amendments are received, and the bill shall retain its place on third reading. Senator Libis. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I have a page of motions here that I, I need to read to you, sir. Um, Mr. President, amendments are offered on the following third reading calendar bills. We'll start out with Senator Little, page 20, calendar 143, Senate print 4358A. Senator Lanza, page 22, calendar 180, Senate print 3606. Senator Laval on page 35, calendar 504, Senate print 6418. A very important one by Senator Libis on page 36. 505-6769A. Senator Grazani, page 45, calendar number 626-6907. Senator Golden on page 45, calendar 641, 7057 is the Senate print. Senator Maziarz, page 47, calendar 659, Senate print 6450. Senator Young, page 51, uh, calendar 699, 2742A. Senator Laval would be page 51, calendar 700, Senate print 2883. Senator Lanza, page 52, calendar 705, Senate print 5654. Senator Golden, page 55, calendar 742, Senate print 6931. And Senator Golden, page 61, calendar 802, Senate print 7226. Mr. President, I now move that these bills retain their place on third reading. The, amend the amendments on all the specified bills are accepted, and the bills shall retain their place on third reading. Mr. President, Senator at this Lewis. time we have a, um, a resolution by Senator Ball, number 5276. Could we read its title and then call on Senator Grisanti? The Secretary will read. Legislative Resolution Number 5276 by Senator Ball, memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim May 28, 2014 as Animal Advocacy Day in the state of New York. Senator Grisanti. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, for those who don't know, today's Animal Advocacy Day. And if you were down in the well, you saw a lot of our four-legged friends uh, really having a good time. And if they came up to you and kissed you, that means they appreciate the support and all the legislation we've done in the past. If they bit you, that means you voted negative on that legislation. So trust me, they know. But it's important that we, we speak for them and for all, uh, for all breeds and all degrees. Uh, we've done some tremendous legislation in the past from having accountability, uh, also legislation dealing with review of procedures. There's, there's uh, uh, legislation that's gonna be passed today that has more accountability uh, for the animals uh, across New York State. Uh, a lot of people don't realize it, but it's important. Uh, because you see something horrific on TV, some sort of abuse, uh, some sort of crime against animals. Uh, you know what, when it comes down to it, it ends up costing those not-for-profits, the taxpayers of your villages, your towns and your cities, it ends up costing them money. So this legislation uh, strengthens that. 
that we've passed in years past, we're passing today. And I want to commend uh, Senator Ball uh, for having animal advocacy day uh, today and as he did years past. Uh, and it's just a great event. And, and trust me, ASPC, ASPC, and other groups, uh, they appreciate it as well. So I appreciate it, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Grisanti. The question is on the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Senator Libis. Questions, I'll be happy to open this up. Mr. President, can we okay. <coughs> excuse me, open this resolution up for all members? If uh, a member chooses not to go on, they'll let the desk know is our policy. Uh... The resolution is open for co-sponsorship. Should you choose not to, notify the desk. Senator Libis. Mr. President, uh, I want to take up a previously adopted resolution 4664 by Senator Carlucci. I believe he would like it read in its entirety and then he would like to be called on. The Secretary will read. Legislative Resolution Number 4664 by Senator Carlucci, memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim May 28, 2014 as Haitian Unity Day in the State of New York. Whereas, it is the sense of this legislative body, in keeping with its time-honored traditions, to recognize and pay tribute to those organizations which foster ethnic pride and enhance the profile of cultural diversity which strengthens the fabric of the communities of the state of New York. Whereas, attended to such concern in full accord of the long-standing traditions, this legislative body is justly proud to memorialize Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim May 28, 2014 as Haitian Unity Day in the state of New York. And whereas, Haiti, located less than 700 miles from the United States of America, is the second nation in the Western Hemisphere after the United States to earn its independence and has, since 1803, stood as a beacon of freedom as the first black governed republic in the world. And whereas Haiti is one of the original members of the United Nations and several of its specialized and related agencies, as well as a member of the Organization of American States. And whereas, on August 22, 1791, Haiti was, was the island nation where hundreds of thousands of enslaved persons initiated the most successful slave rebellion in history under the military leadership of Francois Toussaint L'Ouverture, the grandson of African chief, making the Haitian Revolution a major turning point in the history of the world with repercussions extending far beyond the Caribbean nation. And whereas, the contributions of Jean-Jacques de Céline, a former slave, led Haiti's Declaration of Independence in 1804. Jean-Jacques de Céline became the first ruler over an independent Haiti. His actions left a legacy of Haitian nationalism. The Haitian national anthem, La Dissalinian, is named after him to honor his fervent efforts to protect the independence of Haiti. And whereas Haiti's victory against France redefined Napoleon's goals in the Western Hemisphere and so set the stage for the Louisiana Purchase, a single acquisition doubling the United States' size, giving the United States its heartland, control of the Mississippi River, and the important port city of New Orleans on the Gulf of Mexico. The Louisiana Territory drew immigrants from all over Europe, transforming and strengthening the United States and the American people. And whereas, for many years preceding the American Civil War, the Haitian Revolution had a substantial influence over many of the policies and laws in the United States that related to slavery, such as in 1794 and 1800, the federal government passage of anti-slave trade laws to prevent the possible spread of the Haitian slave revolt to the United States prohibiting citizens from equipping ships engaged in slave trade commerce, barring Americans from serving aboard such ships or from having any interest in their voyages. And whereas in 1792, a number, number of measures taken to prevent a slave rebellion in the United States were so brutal and inhumane that these acts drove and strengthened the crusade of the abolitionists in the United States, therefore having a profound influence on the movement that led to the Civil War. And whereas the Haitian Revolution ignited a groundbreaking change in the history of the modern world by enabling hundreds of thousands of African slaves worldwide and tens of thousands of free persons of color to find the wherewithal to unite in the quest for individual and collective liberty. And whereas Haitian people have migrated to the United States since the 1700s, resulting in approximately 200,000 Haitians residing in the state of New York. And whereas our state enjoys a great legacy from the successors of free, freed Haitian slaves who came to the United States, notably Pierre Toussaint, the first layman now being proposed by the Catholic Church to become a saint, who arrived in New York in 1787 
where he turned his home into a shelter for orphans, a credit bureau, an employment agency, and a safe haven for priests. Toussaint was a benefactor of the first New York City Catholic school for black children at St. Vincent de Paul on Canal Street. Toussaint also provided money to build a new Roman Catholic church in New York, which became Old St. Patrick's Cathedral on Mulberry Street. And whereas, in October of 1995, John Paul II, from the throne of the sanctuary of New York's St. Patrick's Cathedral, publicly bestowed Pierre Toussaint with the suffix Venerable, which is a second step towards becoming a saint in the Catholic Church because Pierre Toussaint transcends race through his miracle and charitable acts as evidence that he is not a man limited in range and that his love for his neighbor is not restricted to race or tribe. And whereas many other notable Haitians have made rich contributions to the nations, such as Tuskegee trained Raymond Casignol, who helped, who helped from the Haitian Air Force in the United States. And whereas Jean-Baptiste Point du Sabot was born in St. Mark, Haiti, du Sabot became the first permanent resident of Chicago and is known as the father of Chicago. Du Sabot was honored with the creation of the du Sabot Museum of African American History in Washington Park and also honored with the issue of Black Heritage Series 22 cent post stamp on February 20th, 1987. And whereas W.E.B. Dubois was a civil rights activist who helped advocate for equality amongst African Americans. He also encouraged social mobility by introducing African Americans to higher education. W.E.B. Dubois is the founder of the NAACP and he was also the first African American to earn a doctorate degree, thus setting a precedent for the development of the black race in the United States. And whereas Jean-Michel Basquiat, born in Brooklyn, New York, became famous for his profound, thought-provoking artwork, which employed social commentary to discuss social inequalities and promote social mobility inequality. Basquiat's artwork had been influential to many contemporary artists and poets. Basquiat's legacy is universally recognized as a catalyst for social change. And whereas John James Audubon, born in Haiti, inspired one of the founders of the Audubon Society in the late 1800s to name the society after John James Audubon because of his reputation and deep appreciation and concern for the natural world. To this day, the name Audubon reminds synonymous with avian life, wildlife protection, and environmental conservation the world over. And whereas Haitian culture and contributions have had a definite mark on not only the progression of equality and independence, but also upon the development of less expressions of art and literature. Moreover, the long-lasting influence that Haitian Americans have on the United States can be seen through the movements of a productive society. Such developments have been collectively centered to push the populace forward. And whereas it is a practice legislative body to recognize those important days which remind us the rich and diverse heritage of our great state and nation, now therefore be it resolved that this legislative body pause in its deliberations to memorialize Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim May 28, 2014 as Haitian Unity Day in the state of New York in honor of Haiti's legacy of liberty and justice throughout the world and in honor of the significant and countless contributions of New Yorkers of Haitian descent who have enriched our nation and state and be a further resolve that a copy of this resolution suitably engrossed be transmitted to the Honorable Andrew M. Cuomo, Governor of the state of New York. Senator Carlucci. Thank you, Mr. President, and I want to thank my colleagues for joining with me today to proclaim uh, May 28th as Haitian Unity Day in the state of New York. And as we've all heard from the Secretary of the Senate uh, reading that lengthy resolution of the contributions that Haitian Americans have had uh, to New York State, to this country, and to this planet. And we're so fortunate because today uh, we're gathered in the gallery um, by many of my neighbors uh, and people throughout the state of Haitian American descent that are with us here today. Uh, this has become an annual tradition in the New York State Senate uh, to honor the contributions that Haitian American New Yorkers have made to this great state. Um, and that resolution could have gone on and on about the great contributions uh, that Haitian Americans have made. And we're also so fortunate that we have with us in the, in the gallery uh, Nikita Bernard, who was the Grand Marshal of the Spring Valley Haitian Unity Parade uh, just the other week. And this past Sunday, uh, many Haitian Americans celebrated uh, Mother's Day this past Sunday. 
Uh, it's, a, it's a tradition uh, in the Haitian culture uh, to celebrate Mother's Day uh, twice during the year, which is extremely important, and we should all be taking that tradition to heart. But I'm just so blessed and so fortunate and honored um, to have such a robust, vibrant Haitian community uh, that I am able to represent here in the New York State Senate. And I want to thank my colleagues for honoring and recognizing the vast amount of contributions um, that Haitian Americans have had to this great state and are continuing to make uh, this to every day and moving forward. So thank you, Mr. President, and thank you to my colleagues in the Senate. Thank you, Senator Carlucci. Senator Martins. <laughs> Senator Martins on the resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I rise to lend my voice in support of this resolution, uh, for I too have a vibrant Haitian community uh, in my district, communities such as Elmont, such as Westbury, Newcastle, wonderful, vibrant communities, all the more strong because of the Haitian communities they're in. So I, I want to take the opportunity to thank Senator Carlucci for introducing this resolution and I, too, want to lend my voice in welcome to the Haitian community and a heartfelt thank you for all you do for our communities, all the help you do, all the wonderful work you do uh, in supporting not only our schools, our children, but our business communities. God bless you. Much success. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Sanders on the resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. It is in keeping with this great community. Uh, we, you, you could go back to just some simple things, just like the name Toussaint Leoverture speaks of the opening. This is a community that wherever it goes, it creates an opening. That from 1804 to this period, in spite of the many difficulties faced by this great community, they have taken on all challenges whether it be the Spanish, the English, the French, or whoever else comes. And they have shown that the spirit of humankind is stronger than any ad adversary that could come against them. So I, too, have to stand to, to raise my voice in proud recognition of such a great community, but to say that the, 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 the past is fantastic, but the best is yet to come for this community. God bless you all. Senator Larkin on the resolution. President, I join my colleagues in paying homage and respect to the Haitian community. I represent the villages in Havistraw. I've been down in your neighborhood. There he is. How are you? <laughs> That's all right. At my age, you can do this. But you know, the last time we had uh, naturalization, there were a number from the community. And I said at that time, we welcome you to America. Many of you have been here 10, 12, 15 years. But we don't want you to forget the culture from which you came to America from, so that we embrace it and we earn and respect what you've come through and what type of a life you had. But you're now an American citizen. And I said, don't forget it. You'll always be an American, but you can always refer to the company that was your place of birth, where you raised some of your children. The most important thing is, in my working knowledge of the community, is their respect for family, their respect for their neighbors, and of always wanting to do something to improve the quality of life for their family. That will never go away. It'll always be there, and you'll be able to say in your heart and soul, I have a background. I'm proud of it, but I'm also proud to be an American. Thank you, and God bless you. We welcome the 
members of the Haitian community here to the chamber today. We extend the courtesies of the House to you and we wish you well. The resolution was adopted on April 29, 2014. Senator Levis. Senator Carlucci would like to open it up and as our policy goes, if someone chooses not to be on, let the desk know. So designated. <clears throat> Senator Levis. Uh, on behalf of um, Senator Diaz, I believe resolution 4927 is at the desk. Could we read it in its entirety and call on Senator Diaz? The Secretary will read. Legislative Resolution Number 4927 by Senator Diaz, celebrating Taiwan Heritage Day. Whereas, the United States and Republic of China share common ideals and clear vision for the 21st century, where freedom and democracy are the foundation for peace, prosperity, and progress. And whereas, Taiwan was, has become a multi-party multi democracy in which all citizens have the right to participate freely in the political process, as evidenced by Taiwan's five democratic presidential elections, which took place in 1996, 2000, 2004, 2008, and 2012. And whereas, through cross-strait dialogue, the establishment of the Economic Cooperation Framework Agreement with mainland China and the policy of viable di diplomacy, President Ma Yingzhao of the Republic of China has transformed the Taiwan Strait from a major international flashpoint into an essential component of East Asian peace and prosperity. And whereas Taiwan is one of the strongest democratic allies of the United States in the Asia Pacific region and spares no effort to maintain peace and prosperity in East Asia, as evidenced by the East China Sea Peace Initiative pro proposed by President Ma Ying Zhao. And whereas the United States passed the Taiwan Relations Act in 1979 to define the relations of the United States and the Republic of China, which strongly strengthens their friendship, and the year 2014 marks the 35th anniversary of the passing of the Taiwan Relations Act. And whereas the United States and Taiwan share a long-term and close economic relationship, including $63 billion of bilateral trade in 2012, making Taiwan the 11th largest trading partner of the United States. And whereas the United States assisted Taiwan in attaining participation in the assembly of the International Civil Aviation Organization in 2013, and will continue supporting Taiwan's meaningful participation in other United Nations affiliated organizations, such as the United Nations Framework Convention of, of Climate Change. And whereas in order to strengthen bilateral trade relations with the United States, the government of the Republic of China has expressed its wish to participate in the Trans-Pacific Strategic Economic Partnership Agreement and to sign a bilateral investment agreement and a free trade agreement with the United States in the near future. And whereas the state of New York exported $1.1 billion worth of products to Taiwan in 2012, making Taiwan the 18th largest foreign market for the New York state, strengthening bilateral economic ties. And whereas many of the United States' top 500 companies, which are headquartered in New York, including IBM, Pfizer, Corning, Citigroup, AIG, MetLife, J.P. Morgan Chase, Merrill Lynch, and New York Life, have invested in Taiwan. And whereas there, there are more than 300 Taiwanese companies which have invested in the state of New York in sectors such as computers, finance, jewelry, sporting goods, and garments. And whereas the state of New York is home to a thriving overseas Taiwanese community, both the government of Taiwan and Chinese Americans, including the Chinese Chamber of Commerce of New York, Chinese Consolidated Benevolent Association, Buddhist Light International Association in New York, and the National Women's League of the Republic of China, devote themselves to serving the community of the state of New York. The state of New York has maintained a friendly and fruitful relationship with Taiwan for many years. And whereas the New York State Legislature held its first Taiwan Heritage Day celebration at the Legislative Office Building in Albany in April 2013 to promote bilateral relations between New York and Taiwan, and this legislature is holding the second Taiwan Heritage Day celebration in 2014. Now, therefore, be resolved that this legislative body pause its deliberations to celebrate Taiwan Heritage Day and be a further resolved that a copy of this resolution, suitably engrossed, be transmitted to President Ma Ying Zhao of the Republic of China through the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in New York. Senator Diaz. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, 
my fellow senators, ladies and gentlemen, you should know that I have been trying to become a senator who brings all cultures together and that I have a result to bring all different cultures to this chamber and introduce them to all of you. You should also know, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, that to that effect, I was the first senator to introduce the Dominican community and its culture in the Senate chamber and a Dominican minister offering the invocation in Spanish. I have honored the Garifuna community having one of their ministers as well offer the invocation in the Garifuna language. I was also honored, Mr. President, I was honored and privileged to present the Bangladesh community to be recognized and one of their imams did the invocation in Bangla for the first time in this chamber. You should also know, ladies and gentlemen, that today, today, for the fifth year in a row, I'm privileged to sponsor a Senate resolution celebrating the government and the people of Taiwan in order to recognize them for their wonderful, humanistic, generous, rich financial cultural contribution to our country and to the state of New York. On behalf of my constituents and the children of the South Bronx, I must, I must thank and recognize the contribution of the Taiwanese government and its representative to the needy children of the Bronx. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, as you know, I represent the South Bronx, one of the poorest areas in the nation. Every year, every single year, during Christmas celebration, as the three kings came to visit Jesus, the Taiwanese community, the Taiwanese government, the Taiwanese representative come to the Bronx, bringing back packs filled with all kinds of, of school supplies for the black and Hispanic children of my district. This these school supplies, Mr. President, not only give our children a boost of encouragement to do their best at school during the, 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 the new year, but also take some of the financial burden from their parents for the cost of these items. And what is equally special is that each year that Taiwan officials come to the South Bronx for our Three Kings Day celebration, the children and parents in attendance get to witness a cultural and racial unity at its best. Mr. President, my fellow senators, you should know that not only has the Taiwanese government been generous to the poor children of the South Bronx, but it is important to remember that when New York was hit by the Superstone Sandy, the Taiwanese government immediately contributed $200,000 toward, toward the relief effort of the people affected by Superstone Sandy. The Taiwanese, in collaboration with other groups, including the Buddhist Tu Chi Foundation, raised $10 million to what desperately needed relief supply that assisted our constituents through for the very challenging and difficult times. Yes, Mr. President, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is important for me, for you to understand 
and to know that Taiwan is one of the strongest democratic allies of the United States in Asia. We must never forget that Taiwan spares no effort to maintain peace and prosperity in East Asia, as evidenced by the East China Peace Initiative proposed by President Man in Zhou. You should know that Taiwan is the ninth largest trading partner of the United States. Both Taiwan and the United States have maintained a close relationship for many years. Yes, it is important for us to recognize that Taiwan has a strong relationship with the state of New York. As you heard in the resolution, Taiwan is the 18th largest foreign market for New York State. Many of New York's top 500 companies have significant investment in Taiwan, and there are more than 300 Taiwanese companies that have invested in New York. That is what I call a good and strong financial relationship. Finally, Mr. President, today I have the honor and privilege to be joined here in the Senate chamber by, many, by my distinguished guests. We have here with us, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, Ambassador Paul Wen Liang Chen. from the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in New York. We have Mr. Ho Yu Li, President of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce in New York. We have Mr. Justin Yu, Chairman of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce in New York. Reverend J. Chen Shi, Abbeys from the Fo Guan Shan New York Temple. <laughs> David Chen, Director of the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in New York. <laughs> and my good friend Ann Noonan, who has been instrumental in helping me develop the industry. I also want to acknowledge the more the close as 100 Taiwanese. <laughs> close to more than 100 Taiwanese people who are joining us in the Senate Gallery. Let me see if I, could, if I know how to say this. Ni hao, da chao, hao. <laughs> Welcome to Albany. Finally, to all of you friends, friends, colleagues, tonight, after the section ends, I would like the Ambassador Po Wen Li Chen and myself would like to invite you to a reception in room six on the concourse level, which will include a delicious Chinese food. You are invited. Come and join us. A delicious Chinese food. You don't have to spend money. It's free. And a stunning photo photo exhibit from the Buddha Life Foundation and a presentation of a Chinese dance tonight, all free of charge for you. Mr. Lady, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, I am State Senator Ruben Diaz, and this is what you should know. Thank you very much. Senator Levis, why do you rise? Senator Diaz would like to open that up for sponsorship. So, Senator Levis, uh, we have two more speakers on the resolution. Oh, 
Uh, I'm going to recognize well, Senator. Well, then after we have the two more speakers or whomever else would like to speak, we'll open it up for sponsorship. So noted. Senator Stavisky. Sorry. To my friends, I say, Dodge a how. And welcome. Um, as the Reverend Senator Diaz might have said, muy casa es su casa. How is that? Muy casa, which means my house is your house. To Am Ambassador Paul Wen Liang Chang, welcome. I met uh, the ambassador, he was only in New York a few days during the Lunar New Year uh, celebration at um, Queen's Crossing, I believe. He and his wife had just arrived, if my memory is correct, from Switzerland, and he has taken over what has been a very active uh, uh, Taiwanese Economic Development uh, Council. To the venerable uh, Chuan, I have visited Buddha Light on many occasions, particularly your social programs the social service programs, and they are a meaningful part of, uh, of, the, of the community. And to Mr. Lee, Mr. Yu, whom I've known for a long time, uh, and to our friends in the gallery, welcome. We hope that we can make you feel as welcome as I felt when I visited Taiwan on a number of occasions um, over the last uh, eight or nine years. As has been mentioned, the United States has had a long relationship with the Republic of China, going back 35 years for the signing of the Taiwan Relations Act. And that friendship has flourished over the years, particularly in Queens County. Uh, it's an economic friendship. It's a social, um, philosophical, cultural heritage that we respect. I have toured factories in Taiwan and factories in Flushing and felt very much at home in both places. A number of years ago, the controller, uh, Tom DiNapoli, issued a report talking about how the economy was flourishing in downtown Flushing, particularly as a result of the uh, contributions of the Asian American community, both the Korean American community and the Chinese American community. And I'm proud to represent uh, uh, probably most of the people in the gallery and on the floor. The community provides all kinds of services, whether they be professional or uh, economic or social services. They have an active community of uh, people from young children in our schools. We speak 160 languages in the local schools in downtown Flushing to the senior citizens programs. And in fact, I was at uh, one of them this past Friday night, uh, the, Na the uh, Nanshan um, Senior Center uh, um, celebration. And Reverend Diaz mentioned the help during Super storm, super storm Sandy. There was an occasion where somebody from the Rockaways called me and said, are there any hotels in downtown Flushing? And the people at one of them opened their doors for those looking for refuge. Uh, and they could not have been nicer. And it's that kind of hospitality during an emergency that you just don't forget. Uh, the food was mentioned. You'll never go hungry in Flushing. Never. There are restaurants opening every day. And each one is delicious. So I recommend everybody, with all due respects to my colleagues, downtown Flushing has the best Chinese, as well as other Asian restaurants you can find anywhere. Um, 
I should also mention the contributions that the Asian American community has made in government. And I am proud that Flushing is represented by Congresswoman Grace Meng, by Council Member Peter Ku, who are of Chinese uh, um, ancestry, and Ron Kim in the Assembly, who is a Korean American. So you have achieved a great deal in Flushing, and yet the best is yet to come. And to the Ambassador, we extend our appreciation to President Ma and to um, the entire Ministry of Foreign Affairs for everything that you have done, both as a government, but also your representatives who are now American citizens. We welcome you. We think that you are doing a wonderful job, and we thank you for all of your help, uh, and we pledge our continued support. Thank you. Senators, Senator Sanders. I rise to do three things quickly, and I will try to do them briefly. The first, of course, is to thank uh, Senator Diaz for bringing so many communities together. It is a, 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 a blessed thing that he does to find ways of bringing the different people of the world together. And indeed, we have been honored to get together to have all of the different communities that have come here. But I would be remiss if I did not, in the second thing, uh, thank the community for aiding us in the time of Sandy. I come from the communities that have been hit the hardest by Superstorm Sandy, and we absolutely appreciate your efforts and what you have done uh, to make sure that our burden was not shouldered alone. But and lastly, sir, I would be remiss if I did not speak and say how, as when I was the chair of economic development in the city council of New York, I had the pleasure of touring Taiwan. And I was amazed at many things. I was amazed not simply at the great food, which is, is worth speaking about, not simply at the, the lights and the color, uh, the, the lights that are so bright that they can challenge New York. Uh, that you would, if you were ever had the pleasure, you would think that you were in New York City. Um, except it may have been more colorful in some respects. Uh, but what caught my attention the most was the creativity and vitality of the people. Uh, an island nation that with few resources has managed to become one of the tigers of Asia, one of, the, one of the leading lights of the world. And that speaks to not simply the resources of an area, but it speaks to the resources of the people. I also had the pleasure of, of speak, having uh, some time to speak with now President Mon. You must send him my, my greetings. Uh, I learned a lot from him, and we enjoyed ourselves together. Um, you must tell him that I look forward when he is in New York City that I will return the favor and see uh, if I can show what New Yorkers are known for, New York hospitality. I thank you very much. The resolution was previously adopted on May 13th of 2014. Uh, it, Senator Latimer to speak. Senator Latimer. Thank you, Mr. President. Woman Ziha Ni, Zuni Pingon Wi, Jia Tong Dao. Jinapa Bien Jipa. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Latimer. Uh, the resolution was previously adopted and is open to everyone. Should you choose not to be a co sponsor, please notify the desk. We welcome the members of the Taiwanese community. We greet the ambassador and all of the leaders who are here. Thank you for being here. And Good luck. <laughs> Senator Libis. Yes. <laughs> Mr. President, uh, as I said before, we want to open that up. I think Senator Diaz wants to open that up. So if s someone chooses not to go on, let the desk know. And, Mr. President, last but not least, Senator Diaz has Resolution 4926 at the desk. Please have it read in its entirety. 
and call on the good senator. The secretary will read. Legislative resolution number 4926 by Senator Diaz, commemorating the 110th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce of New York, Inc. Whereas, it is the sense of this legislative body to recognize the achievements of those organizations which substantially contribute to the economic vitality of their communities in the, em in the entire Empire State. And whereas attentive to such concern and in full accord with its long-standing traditions, it's the sense of this legislative body to commemorate the 110th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce of New York, Inc. And whereas the Chinese Chamber of Commerce of New York, Inc. was founded by a group of public-minded Chinese businessmen in 1904 as a trading association registered with the Chinese imperial government. And whereas in 1932, this esteemed organization incorporated itself as the Chinese Chamber of Commerce of New York. And whereas the Chamber reaches out and serves the extensive and significant New York City Chinese business community, its mission is to promote, to promote and support the expansion and progress of Chinese commercial pursuits, to encourage international trade with the Far East and other areas of the world, and to advise and assist the members in solving problems relating to their business. And whereas the Chinese Chamber of Commerce of New York works to develop cooperation with financial institutions to provide low-cost loans to the small businesses in the community, collects and disseminates information and data on business conditions both domestically and internationally, continuously searches for sources, commodities, and supplies which benefit the businesses of the community, and promotes and sponsors a low-income senior citizen housing development with the assistance of the government. And whereas, since its inception, the Chinese Chamber of Commerce of New York has helped businesses and the community it serves to prosper, always responding to the needs of its, of its area. And whereas, a solid cornerstone of the community, the Chinese Chamber of Commerce of New York will continue to evolve and to improve, always seeking out new ways of helping its members and community. And whereas, it is, it is with great pleasure that this legislative body acknowledges this exceptional organization and its contributions to the local and state e economies. Fully confident that it will continue to enjoy the successes it has experienced thus far. Now, therefore, be resolved that this legislative body pauses deliberations to commemorate the 110th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce of New York, Inc., and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution, suitably engrossed, be transmitted to Mr. Justin Yu, Chair of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce of New York, Inc. Senator Diaz. Thank you one more time, Mr. President, and thank you, Senator Livos, and thank you, fellow senators. I'm honored today again <clears throat> to sponsor this resolution commemorating the 110th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese Chambers of Commerce of New York. Here in the York State Senate, we often take time to recognize the achievement of our constituents, to honor many heroes and heroines who have gone above and beyond the call of duty, and frequently to remember those who have gone before us. For 110 years, this outstanding organization has promoted Chinese business in New York. And for 110 years, this magnificent organization has encouraged trade and provided much needed technical assistance to its members in New York. Just think about that for a moment. 110 years in operation. That is incredible amount of time, incredible amount of time for any organization, especially a service organization to be in business. 110 years of assessing and helping its members. 110 years of striving to improve the community. 110 years solving problems. I'm pleased 
that my dear friend Justin Yu, the current chairman of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce in New York, could join us today because for almost 20 years, it has been my honor, my privilege, my blessing to know Justin Yu, my friend. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Justin Yu, tireless effort to unite our communities continue to bring so many of us together. Although his term as president of Chinese Consolidated Benevolent Association has expired, I will always refer him, Mr. Yu, Mr. Yu, I will always refer you and call you the mayor of Chinatown. Because that's what you are, the mayor of Chinatown. I am sure that all who are gathered here and know Mr. Justin Yu will agree with me that he is one of New York's most respected community leaders. And also, Mr. President, and ladies and gentlemen, as we recognize the past 110 years of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce of New York, let us wish them well for the next 110 years. May the Lord bless you again. I'm sure, I am sure, once again, I am inviting you to join me and Ambassador Wen Liam Shen for a reception at 5 p.m. to watch a dance of Chinese culture, to eat Chinese food, and to see Chinese painting. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and Mr. President, this is an honor that this black guy from Bayamón, Puerto Rico, with a kinky hair, has given, have got, got given to him today. And I'm very pleased, very blessed, very honored, very happy, very satisfied. <laughs> Senator Squadron. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and thank you, Senator Diaz so much for uh, recognizing this community every year, recognizing this organization, uh, for both of the resolutions before us today, uh, the first and this one. I would say, however, Senator Diaz, that all that you say about the Chinese Chamber of Commerce is true. All that you say about Chairman Justin Yu is true. You left out one key fact, which is that Justin is my constituent. And uh, the Chinese Chamber of Commerce is based in my district in Lower Manhattan. But of course, it's appropriate that Senator Diaz spoke with such pride, both about Justin Yu and about the Chinese Chamber of Commerce, because the influence of this individual and this organization go well beyond uh, New York's, uh, Manhattan's Chinatown, which really is the historic cultural center uh, of the Chinese American community, certainly on the East Coast in this country. But today, as Senator Stavisky said, uh, as Senator Diaz said, as Senator Sanders said, uh, the community extends far beyond any single neighborhood. It is now a community that is uh, deeply part of uh, the entire city of New York, the entire state of New York. And we are all better for it. The culture, the community, the entrepreneurship that uh, the Chinese Chamber of Commerce supports and furthers is uh, so important to who we are uh, as we change. We know that the community is growing enormously. We know that in New York City public schools, uh, Asian Americans make up uh, one out of six students. We know that in the small business community, uh, Asian Americans are a, an important and growing presence. But we also know that in the schools, Language barriers and cultural barriers, uh, including the Lunar New Year school holiday, are too often not recognized. We know that when it comes to entrepreneurship and starting businesses, language barriers and uh, the challenges of starting up in a community where often there isn't a great deal of capital or a great network uh, that already exists of successful business owners creates challenges that are too often ignored by our government at the city and the state level. 
And so the work of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce is to create partnerships within my community in Lower Manhattan and across the state to make sure that those who are here and doing what we want everyone to do, work hard, be creative, try to do more for the next generation than they were able to have for themselves, have the kind of strength that is often, especially in immigrant communities, so hard to come by. And so to Justin Yu and the entire Chinese Chamber of Commerce, first of all, thank you for continuing to stay focused within our community on the streets and the blocks from 200 trees to thousands of small businesses. And thank you for the work that you do well beyond that, because it really is your leadership in organizations like yours, the partnership that we have uh, with uh, uh, the Republic of China that together have let this community grow. And you know, it's no accident that we have a full gallery today, that we have uh, a, a real period of time to discuss and focus on this issue. And the reason for that is, this is a community that can no longer be ignored. It can no longer uh, be drowned out in the political process. And that is of such great importance. And for that, I thank all of you being honored today. I thank Senator Diaz for ensuring that we take time to acknowledge that every year on this floor. And I look forward to some of the best food this town will have to offer come 5 o'clock this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Stavisky. Again, I thank my colleague, Senator Diaz, and congratulate my friend, Justin Yu. Um, we've known each other since almost since the time I was first elected. Um, I do agree that Chinatown is the starting point, the epicenter for the Chinese American community. But earlier, I tried to discuss how, work, how much the Chinese American community has achieved what we like to call the American dream. And we've done it because of organizations such as the Chinese American Chamber of Commerce. We've done it because we are a community that works together. And that is an extremely important issue. We work together, the government officials, the business community, the religious community, the social community. And again, we do thank um, the Chinese American Chamber of Commerce for being the linchpin uh, for this cohesiveness that represents the Asian American community, particularly the Chinese American community. Uh, and I'm glad uh, my colleague Senator Sanders spoke about um, his visit to, uh, to Taiwan because I have been to Taiwan from Taipei to Kaohsiung and everywhere in between I was impressed not only by the industrial strength but quite frankly more importantly <coughs> by the people. And it's the people that make the country. And we again welcome you to Albany and congratulate you on 110 years of service to the community. Thank you. The resolution was previously adopted on May 13th of 2014. Again, we congratulate the uh, Chinese Chamber of Commerce of New York on the celebration of the 110th anniversary. Senator Livis. President, uh, Senator Diaz would also like to open that resolution up for uh, the full House, so if anybody chooses not to go on, let the desk know. The resolution is open before the House. If you choose not to be a co-sponsor, please indicate at the desk. Congratulations and thank you all for being here. Senator Lewis. At this time, could you call on Senator Jack Martins for the purposes of recognition, please? Senator Martins. Thank you, Mr. President. My colleagues, uh, you've heard me from time to time talk about my background and my heritage. Uh, my parents immigrated from Portugal in the 1960s from a small rural village called Alheira, which is a, a very tiny village in northern Portugal. So I have the opportunity today, Mr. President, to recognize and welcome to the chamber uh, friends 
uh, colleagues and representatives from a very small rural village in northern Portugal who have come to visit with us today. Uh, for many, this is the first time they've been to the United States and to New York, and certainly for all, it's the first time they've been able to join with us in the New York State Senate um, as we take the opportunity to recognize them um, as they came to visit with me to see one of their own sitting in the well of the New York State Senate and having an opportunity to address them as well. So my dear colleagues, allow me the opportunity to present João Rodrigues Martins, who is the president of the, uh, the, the village of Alheira, as well as members João Antonio Portela Martins, Antonio Portela Pereira, Antonio Benedito Lopes Pereira, João Fernandes, Joaquim Pereira, Antonio Pereira, Luiz Nogueira de Souza, José Gonçalves, Antonio Mendes, as well as João Cerqueira Macedo, and my own father, Antonio Martins, who are, who are joining us today. Um, to all meus amigos, bem-vindos à sala do Senado do Estado de Nova York. Uh, um prazer tê-los aqui conosco. E bem-vindos. Até uma próxima. Um grande abraço. Muito obrigado, Mr. President. Thank you. We uh, welcome our visitors from Portugal today with a very special welcome to Mr. Martins. Uh, thank you for being with us. We extend the courtesies of the House to you and wish you very well. Senator Libis. Mr. President, I don't know what Senator Martins was saying there at the end, but they were all smiling, so it had to be good. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, at this time, could we please take up the reading of the non-controversial calendar? Secretary will read. Calendar number 126 by member of the Assembly Wiesenberg, Assembly for an 8639 Act Amendment Real Property Tax Law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelis, Stuart Cousin Zeldin, ayes 59. Bills passed. Oops. Excuse me. Ayes 58, nays 1, Senator Kruger, recorded in the negative. Bill still passed. Calendar number 127 by member of the Assembly Wiesenberg, Assembly Print 8646, an act amendment of property tax law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelis, Tour, Cousin Zeldin. Ayes 58, nays 1, Senator Kruger, recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 163 by Senator Ball, Senate Print 2560A, an act amend the Agriculture and Markets Law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelis, Stuart Cousin Zeldin. Ayes 58, nays 1, Senator Montgomery recorded. Senator Montgomery, uh, we are on calendar number 163, bill number 2560A by Senator Ball. Announce results. Ayes 58, nays 1, Senator Montgomery recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 165 by Senator Ball, Senate Print 2649A, an act amend the Environmental Conservation Law. Read the last section. Section 4, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelis, Stuart Cousins, Zeldin. Senator Kruger to explain her vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Just to clarify, while I certainly support outlawing and having civil penalties for the possession of endangered species, the dilemma with this bill is this law already exists on our books. Apparently, in a previous form, this bill included chimpanzees, which were not covered under existing state law. Chimpanzee protection has been removed from this bill, so it does not protect chimpanzees, which I would like to vote for, and it simply um, reaffirms existing law, hence will have no real input, impact. So I hope we can get the right bill on the floor sometime soon. I'll be voting no. Thank you. Senator Kruger to be recorded into negative. Announce the results. In relation to calendar 165, those recorded in the negative are Senators Hoyleman, Kruger, Perkins, and Squadron. Ayes 55, nays 4. The bill is passed. Calendar number 183 by Senator Maziar, Senate Print 4494B, an act amend the general business law. Last section. Section 2, this act to take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelis, Stuart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 58, nays 1, Senator Kruger, recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. 
Calendar number 279 by member of the assembly known, assembly print 121, act amend the education law. Bills laid aside for the day. Calendar number 305 by Senator Seward, Senate print 6376, and act amend the alcoholic beverage control law. Last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Yes. Ayes 58, nays 1, Senator Diaz, recorded in the negative. Bills passed. Calendar number 307 by Senator Marcelino, Senate print 1486A, and act amend the education law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Can I have some order in the House, please? Announce the results. Ayes 57, nays 2, Senators Gibson and Kennedy recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 333 by Senator Ranzenhofer, Senate Print 6718A, Enact Amend Chapter 154 of the Laws of 1921. Last section. Section 3, this act should take effect upon the enactment. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 59. Senator Hoyleman, do you want to explain your vote? Senator Hoyleman to explain his vote. Thank you, Mr. President. I wanted to uh, thank the sponsor of this bill, of which I'm a co-sponsor. You know, the Port Authority is uh, almost entirely run on public money, but it's been able to shield itself from public scrutiny since its inception in 1921. Most Americans didn't even hear about the Port Authority until that infamous phrase, it's time for some traffic problems, in Fort Lee was uttered. Uh, at $8.2 billion, it has a larger budget than 11 states, and I commend uh, this body for passing legislation that will make certain that this authority has the same public scrutiny as every other state authority and agency, and hopefully, Mr. President, with this legislation, should it be signed by the governor, we can prevent the next bridge gate. I vote aye. Senator Hoyleman to be recorded in the affirmative announce the results. Ayes 59. The bill is passed. Calendar number 352 by Senator Robach, Senator Print 6841B, and act amend the highway law. Last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 59. Bills passed. Calendar number 361 by Senator Lanza, Senator Print 3965, and act amend the penal law. Last section. Section 3, this act should take effect on the 30th day. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Senator D. Francisco to explain his vote. I have great respect for the New York City Housing Authority employees, but this is one of never-ending bills that uh, finds a specific victim and elevates the crime of assault, third degree, to assault in the second degree. We're almost there. By the time I retire, we will be there where we'll have every occupation known to people in the state of New York that will be a special victim to have an assault in the second degree statute. So I'm going to vote no. Senator Francisco to be recorded in the negative. Announce the results. Ration to calendar 361. Those recorded in the negative are Senator T. Francisco, Hassel Thompson, Montgomery, and Perkins. Wait, wait Hassel Thompson. Those in the negative, please raise your hands. In relation to calendar 361, those recorded in the negative are Senators D. Francisco, Hassel Thompson, Montgomery, and Perkins. Ayes 55, nays 4. The bill is passed. Calendar number 421 by Senator D. Francisco, Senator Print 6482, enact the state finance law. Last section. <clears throat> section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco, Klein, Libis, Skelos, Stewart, Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 59. The bill is passed. Calendar number 440 by Senator Flanagan, Senate Print 6854A, an act authorizing. Read the last section. Section 11, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 59. The bill is passed. Calendar number 469 by Senator Savino, Senate Print 3677A, an act amend the penal law. Read the last section. Section 3, this act should take effect on the 180th day. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 59. The bill is passed. Can I have some order in the chamber, please? Just getting a little noisy in here. Secretary will continue to read. Calendar number 471 by member of the Assembly, People Stokes, Assembly Print 7720B, and act amend the penal law. Last section. Section 2, this act will take effect on the 90th day. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Senator Kennedy to explain his vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first of all, let me thank my colleagues for 
uh, voting in favor of this extremely important piece of legislation today. Uh, I want to thank the assembly sponsor of this legislation, Assemblywoman Crystal Peoples Stokes. Uh, sadly, this bill has tragic origins. It was prompted by the murder of a young woman, Jackie Wisniewski, who suffered severe domestic abuse prior to her death out in Western New York, a very high profile case back in June of 2012. The day Jackie's life was taken from her was an unspeakable sad day for her family, her friends, and our entire community. Domestic violence has affected so many of us and it's unfortunate and tragic that it takes circumstances like this to pass new laws to prevent domestic abuse. In 2012, more than 6,300 Erie County residents became victims of domestic violence, the majority of which were women. We need to do more to combat this growing problem. Prior to her murder, Jackie found a GPS tracking device that had been installed on her car to monitor her whereabouts. Timothy Jordan, who stalked, abused, and ultimately killed Jackie, had installed the tracking device without her knowledge in order to track her location and movement at all times. Three months prior to her murder, Jackie found this tracking device and notified the police, decided because she was scared for her own life not to press charges. The police hands were tied because the law had a gap in it that didn't allow them to unilaterally press charges. Today we close the gap in that law. The law will help us to keep pace with technology. In 2006, there were nearly 100,000 stalking cases that involved the use of GPS tracking devices. And since 2006, technology has proliferated, as we all know. It's grown in use and accessibility. It's become more prevalent for technology to be used in these stalking cases. The U.S. Department of Justice reported that one in four cases of stalking involves some sort of technology, and one in 13 cases involves electronic monitoring or GPS tracking. Currently, there's no state law that outlaws the use of GPS or other electronic tracking devices in domestic violence or stalking cases, and this legislation changes that. Once we sign this into law, the bill is going to make it punishable to install a GPS tracking device with the intent of stalking or following the movement of another individual. It will help ensure violent abusers stop using technology to destroy the lives of their victims. GPS stalking was an unfortunate part of Jackie's story, and this legislation may have helped her. It will empower police agencies and prosecutors to intervene in domestic violence cases before it's too late. It's urgent that we fully enact this important new protection for survivors of domestic violence, and it will help to prevent GPS stalking and hopefully save lives. It's with heavy hearts today that we mark the passage of this important legislation. We send our thoughts and our prayers with the Wisniewski family, and we thank them for their advocacy to make this day a reality. Thank you, Mr. President. I vote aye. Senator Kennedy, be recorded in the affirmative. Announce the results. Ayes 59. The bill is passed. <clears throat> Calendar number 482 by Senator Parker, Senate Print 1353, enact amend the corrections law. Read the last section. Section 2 of the statute take effect on the 120th day. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Livis, Scala, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 59. Bill's passed. Calendar number 502 by Senator Ball, Senate Print 2566. And act amend the Agriculture and Markets Law. Last section. Section 2 is actually take effect on the 30th day. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Libis, Skelis, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Montgomery, Perkins. Ayes 57, nays 2, Senators Montgomery and Perkins recorded the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 522 by Member of Assembly Buckwall, Assembly Print 9055, and act amend the Surrogate Courts Procedure Act. Last section. <clears throat> Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. All the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco, Klein, Libis, Skelos, Stewart, Cudden, Zeldin. Ayes 59. Bill is passed.
Bill number 536 by Senator Marcelino, Senate from 3854A, enact amend the tax law. Last section. Section 4 of the statute take effect on April 1, 2015. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stewart Cousin Zeldin, ayes 59. The bill is passed. Calendar number 557 by member of the Assembly Schiminger, Assembly Print 4611B, enact amend the public health law. Secretary will read the last section. Section 2 of the statute take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stewart Cousin Zeldin, Ayes 59. Bills passed. Calendar number 574 by Senator Bonasek, Senate Print 2040A, enact amend the penal law. Last section. Section 2 of the statute take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stewart Cousin Zeldin. Senator Squadron to explain his vote. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is um, one of a number of bills that uh, seem to come through this House that uh, create felony spitting. And uh, there's a lot of uh, concerns about, about felony spitting. In fact, we successfully strengthened very similar law in a bipartisan, bicameral way just, uh, just recently uh, in order to protect uh, correctional facilities and uh, uh, those men and women who help uh, to keep them safe. This bill, though, to be very clear, uh, would create a felony out of spitting, could even create a felony out of inadvertent spitting if you were also purposefully annoyed. I don't believe that is good policy or appropriate, and I believe uh, that's why again and again we see these bills, but again and again they don't become law. Uh, I think felony spitting is, is, is certainly a annoying, but I'm not sure is, in fact, or should be a felony. I'll vote no, Mr. President. Senator Squadron to be recorded in the negative. Announce the results. Senator Bonison to explain his vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, last year, uh, we, had, we made it a crime for an inmate uh, to cause blood, seminal fluid, urine, feces of the contents of a toilet bowl to come into contact with a correction officer. And uh, what we didn't include was spitting. And uh, we've been advised by the Centers for Disease Control that saliva can cause transmissions of numerous communicable diseases, including but not limited to hand, foot, and mouth disease, mumps, meningitis, bacteria, and viral, and mononucleosis. Now, the spitting has to be intentional. If it's accidental, then there's no crime committed here. Uh, this is supported by PEF. It's for, the, really, for the protection of fellow inmates and for correction officers. I vote yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Bonasek to be recorded in the affirmative. Reannounce the results. In relation to calendar 574, those recorded in the negative are Senators Hoyleman, Kruger, Montgomery, Perkins, and Squadron. Ayes 54, nays 5. The bill is passed. Calendar number 597 by member of the Assembly Robinson, Assembly Print 9037A, enacted in the Baking Law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zeldin. Ayes 59. The bill is passed. Calendar number 604 by Senator Squadron, Senate Print 4878A. Enacted in the New York State Urban Development Corporation Act. Last section. Section 2 is actually take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zeldin. Ayes 59. The bill is passed. Calendar number 614 by Senator Bonasek, Senate Print 7019. Enacted men Chapter 473 of the Laws of 2010. I'll read the last section. Section 2 is actually take effect immediately. Secretary will call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zeldin. Ayes 59. The bill is passed. Calendar number 672 by Senator Felder, Senate Print 7210, enact amend the Family Court Act. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zeldin, ayes 59. Bills passed. Calendar number 690 by Senator Laval, Senate Print 781, enact amend the Education Law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zeldin, ayes 59. Bills passed. Calendar number 716 by Senator Carlucci, Senate Print 1980B, enact amend the Alcoholic Beverage Control Law. The Secretary will read the last section. Section 6, this act should take effect on the 1st of January. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skelos, Stuart Cousin Zeldin. Yeah. Ayes 58, nays 1, Senator Diaz recorded in the negative. And the bill is passed.
Calendar number 719 by Senator Ball, Senate Print 2306, to amend the executive law. Read the last section. Section 2 of this act should take effect immediately. Call roll. Adabo, D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skell, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Oh Ayes 58, nays 1, Senator Montgomery recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 722 by Senator Savino, Senate Print 3682, an act amend the tax law. Read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skell, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes. Ayes 57, nays 2, Senators Kruger and Laval recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 730 by member of the Assembly Pretlow, Assembly Print 8698, and I commend the Racing Pair Mutual Wagering and Breeding Law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skell, Stewart Cousin, Zeldin. Ayes, fi Ayes 58, nays 1, Senator Diaz recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Calendar number 746 by Senator Griffo, Senate Print 7017, an act making certain findings. There's a home rule message at the desk. Secretary will read. Section 5, this act should take effect immediately. Read the last section. Call the roll. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Livis Skell, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin. Ayes 58, nays 1, Senator Ball recorded in the negative. The bill is passed. Senator Livis, that completes the non controversial reading of our calendar today. We will return to motions. Uh, on behalf of Senator Maziars, on page 58, Mr. President, I offer the following amendments. Calendar number 774, Senate print 7099. As I said, bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. The amendments are received, and the bill shall retain its place on third reading. On behalf of Senator Robach, I wish to call up his bill, Senate print 6635, recalled from the Assembly, but it is now at the desk. Secretary will read. <coughs> Calendar number 230 by Senator Robach, Senate print 6635, an act authorized. Mr. President, I now move to reconsider the vote by which this bill is passed. Call the roll reconsideration. Adabo D. Francisco Klein, Libis Skell, Stewart Cousins, Zeldin, ayes 59. Mr. President, I now move uh, or offer the following amendments. The amendments are received. Mr. President, could you call on Senator Serrano at this time, please, for the purpose of announcement. Senator Serrano. Thank you. Uh, there will be an immediate meeting of the Senate Democratic Conference in Room 315. There will be an immediate meeting of the Senate Democratic Conference in Room 315. Senator Libis. Mr. President, uh, thank you. And is there any further business at the desk? There is no further business before there the desk. There being no further business, I move that we adjourn until Thursday, May 29th at 11 a.m. On motion, the Senate stands adjourned until Thursday, May 29th at 11 a.m. It says Sen right here. What's it say? Senate adjourned. What's